What's going on YouTube? Clover Bells here, back with another Series 12 video, but this is not a team building video. This is not a battle video. What this is, is a recap video um, because we just had one of the biggest tournaments uh, for Series 12 uh, this past weekend. In fact, it was actually the biggest one where it was hosted by Victory Road and more than 500 people joined and entered this tournament, all right? I did not do it because I had other things to do than to sit sit at home and play Pokemon for nine plus hours and then we'll wake up the next day for Top Cut. Uh, but what we are gonna do is we're going to recap uh, just what exactly transpired um, over the weekend with Victory Road and we're, we're gonna give a little bit of a shout out to this person over here. Um, his name is Evan Smoke. Okay, and if you don't know Evan, uh, where are you Evan? There you are. Uh, Evan uh, is a is a mod for Little Root Lessons and if you don't know Evan, he compiled together um, his little project called um, VGC Pace uh, and what this is is uh, it basically has uh, it's a, it's an Excel sheet, right? And it's a giant Excel sheet with all of these teams that people have put uh, before Victory Road and then also during Victory Road. Um, and then he also has the top cut, right? And this has been made public. So shout out to Evan for putting all of this data and information together because without Evan, this video is not possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the things that we've noticed uh, in the top cut and where can the meta go from here, right? So again, it, there, there's a, you, you have the player name and then you have the poke paste here and then you have the six mons that they used um, and obviously they have their, their results. Um, and again, what's his name? Um, Jesus Jimenez, he took home the gold with Palkiaization, uh, one outing uh, Paul, right? Uh, in, the, in the second place uh, placement uh, who also had Zation but with a Kyogre instead of a Palkia, right? So again, huge shout out to Evan. So uh, again, we're just gonna go over some key statistics or key things to note, uh, and then we'll make some deductions from there. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, one thing I do wanna note uh, is the top eight results uh, for Victory Road. And uh, you have to exclude the realignment of, of the tweet. You know, it's just a formatting thing, but uh, again, we know that Jesus took uh, took home the gold uh, and Paul came in second. But take a look at the rest of the top eight. So, you know, how many Zations are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the eight had a Zation on it. And that's no surprise, right? We don't need a YouTube video to tell you that Z at least a few Zations were going to be in the in the top eight, right? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. Um, but what you didn't notice um, is how about there's a Sogaleo and then there's a Palkia. And in fact, Palkia was the winner and if you remember uh in my in my video where i made my tier list okay where did i rank palkia and Sogaleo? right here in the a tier palkia a Sogaleo a where did everybody else have them b tier okay some of them even had them in the c tier for Sogaleo, and i i was a little beside myself i couldn't believe people were ranking palkia and Sogaleo so low but now if you look at this not only did they top cut, but Palkia and Sogaleo made it into the top eight. In fact, you know, they Palkia actually won the whole thing. So I like to say, yes, what I was visualizing and seeing uh, came to fruition, right? And it makes sense. Why was Palkia and Sogaleo uh, very good uh, in the tournament? Well, let's take a look at what they can do. So it, look, you, you have Palkia, and then of course you have telepathy. And then if you have something like a life orb, Okay, spatial rend. All right, so in other words, max dragon to reduce attack. So you're gonna neuter your groundons. You're gonna neuter those Zations. Okay, then you have earth power. So now, even though Zations might run play rough, uh, they now you can just potentially KO with earth power, right? Because it's a super effective ground move powered up by life orb. And then of course you have hydro pump. So this way, now what you're doing is you're going for max geysers, uh, and now you're taking away the sun from those grad on teams right and not only that you know you're removing stuff like landers you're removing incineroars uh you know things that don't want to be taking a max max geysers okay and 
you know, this thing bodies Kyogre. You know, well, what's Kyogre going to do to this? Nothing. You know, um, it might have, you know, Ice Beam or Thunder, but those are neutral hits and they're non-stab. Palkia doesn't care about those things, especially when you're going for Max Quakes and boosting your special defenses. So Kyogre can't do anything. Zacians can only do something if they run Play Rough. Okay, but even then, uh, you know, as long as you have something like a Grimmsnarl for support, uh, then you can take those and then just KO it right back. Um, and then there's not too many other dragons that were seen uh, in the top cut results. So Palkia was just running wild, okay? And it makes sense uh, because uh, of all the reasons I mentioned, okay? And, you know, in this Sasa, you could always run Protect. And then typical teams like this, you know, you had stuff like Omungus, right? Then you had like an Incineroar. Okay, pretty standard stuff. And then you had the Zacian, right? So this was like a, a standard Palkia Zacian core. But again, you know, Palkia was so good. And when I saw it, when the format started, I thought about it and I, I knew that this combination uh, would do well. And it's glad, and I'm glad to see that it actually won that whole thing. So, but then what about Solgaleo? What about everyone's favorite lion? Okay, you, you, you played Sun and Moon, okay? You had a it, Lunala did very well, but then what about this thing? Why why was this why is this so good? Why can this be in the A tier? Well, you have this this item called weakness policy, and then you have stuff like this where you had Sun Steel Strike. All right, then you have something like Earthquake, and then maybe Protect, and then uh, this third move. Sometimes it was Rock Slide, but spoilers, sometimes it's also this tech. This is this is the Clover tech right here wild charge right what, what what does wild charge do okay well remember this when you dynamax this this becomes max lightning right and what does max lightning do a lot of things you snipe kyogre you snipe charizard you set electric terrain so now venusaur can't even put you to sleep okay and then you can just remove it with something else on your team and then if they want to trap you with gothitel and click yawn with something like a gastrodon or an Umbreon or whatever it is that they have that has you on like a Blastoise, then you just go for Max Lightning, you set the terrain, you basically make them waste their turn, and yeah, you counter it. So Wild Charge has a lot of use, and it's a great tech uh, for Series 12 on Sogaleo, uh, and especially in a format like this where Kyogre is just everywhere, okay? And let's go into the paste here. All right, I just want I just want you guys to see. Let's see. All right, so this is the Sogaleo team, right? Did he have the tech? Did he have it? He did. Look at this. He had Wild Charge. He saw what I saw. All right, who is this person? What's his name? What's his name? Gabriel. Oh, I'm I'm not gonna try and say that last name. I'm gonna butcher it. But Gabby Gabby said, okay, you know what? Wild Charge has the use. And then he actually ran. There's actually an assault vest here, which is. Again, very, very good, and it made sense on this kind of team. And there's that Calmine Kyogre, uh, which I thought could do very, very well uh, in, a, in a big tournament. And so did Neil. So Neil is like the biggest fan of Calmine Kyogre. And this is one of those kinds of teams that it can do well because you, you don't have the Tornadus. You're just opting to go for a slower, more defensive pos pivoting position. Um, and this is where something like Calmine Kyogre works. But there it is. There's that wild charge. And again, what you can do here is you can go for those max steel spikes, those max quakes, and then just power up your Kyogre's defenses. So now your Kyogre becomes unkillable, and then you set the screens. So you're you're combining screens with the defensive bulk, and then you just sit there, go for combines, and then they they can't kill you because you have this end game of of Kyogre. And this was a very very smart idea. Uh, I liked it a lot. And again, the wild charge. Uh, also helps the Zapdos out. I mean, well, the other way around, right? The Zapdos can also go for that Max Lightning play. And then now Wild Charge does even more damage. So it's actually really, really nice. I like this team a lot. Uh, so shout out to this person, Gabby. Uh, but yeah, so there's one reason, right? So you, you have that. And then again, we, we talked about Palkia here. So I, I expect going forward that these two uh, can do very well. I In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if these two would be on the same team and then they could either reach a finals or they can uh, win a tournament, right? So, uh, Palkia and Solgaleo, they did very well. All right, let's 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 keep on going. Okay, so the other thing I also want to take a look at, and this is, again, the top cut usage stats. Uh, this is the other part of the, of the Excel sheet. 
uh, is what happened to Tornadus, okay, in in a Tornogre kind of archetype. So how many Kyogre teams were there in the top cut? There was 20 of them, right? So of the 20, how many of them actually ran Tornadus? Let's, let's take a look at that. So let's see. No, but it did have Whimsicott. So that's still a form of Tailwind. Okay, this one, no. This one, no. Oh, well, actually, yes, this was Mike's. Okay, so one Whimsicott, one Torn. No, no, they, these guys ran Grimmsnarl. No, 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 there's no Tornadus. Oh, that, all right, that's one. All right, so two Torn, one Whimsicott. No, 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 nope, nope. All, well, also no. And then as I keep going, nope, that's Grimmsnarl and Thunderous again. All right, there's the second Whimsicott. And no. Okay, so, okay, oh, and there's another one. So there was three Torn Tornadoses and two Whimsicotts. So only five of the Kyogre teams had Tailwind. And that's actually kind of interesting. So, you know, we always were a little bit of afraid or, or, or we always planned for Tornogre with Tornadus and Kyogre, but only five of them were seen in the top cut. And that's also uh, interesting to note. And again, you would imagine, you know, Kyogre and Tornadus would be like brothers, but people took a different direction. So instead, they went with something like Grimmsnarl, right? They went with Grimmsnarl on the Kyogre teams. They opted for more defensive bulkier, um, bulkier mods rather than like just full out Tailwind. Uh, and then even then, they also went with stuff like Prankster Thunderous. Uh, like I think this one is a is the fine one. Let me let me just take a look at this one. All right, um, is it gonna open it? Yeah, there it is. Is this the fine or, or or Prankster? All right, so this is Prankster, right? So this is what I mean. So you know you don't have a Tornadus here, but you do have a Thunderous with Thunder Wave, and I guess it makes sense, right? Because then you can counter the opposing Kyogre Torn teams with your own electric move. Uh, but yeah, so it, it was cool. It, it was interesting to see how people took a different direction um, in trying to use uh, Torn Ogre. Still, there was a, a couple, again, Tornadoses, but you know, the question is why did Tornadus uh, not get used as much as one would think, right? Um, I guess in a best of three tournament, people liked uh, more defensive, more, more pivoting positions rather than just click the tailwind button and go burr. Um, and it makes sense. All right. So either it was the Grimmsnarl or it was either like the Thunderous that took its place. And one thing to also note on those Tornogre teams was the use of Zapdos. And um, that's going to bring us into our next segment. All right, so now let's look at Zapdos. Hey, look at this. Look at Zapdos right here. So this is something that I, I didn't expect, uh, but I could first, I can imagine, right? So Zapdos, 31% uh, in the top cut. And then look at something like Regilecki, something that, you know, Regilecki's always been like a top 10 mod, but look at the drop that it had down to 14%. All right, how many of these teams ran Zapdos? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Nine, 10, 11, uh, where else? 12, right? There was at least 12 Zapdoses and then how many Leckies? One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Just just seven Reggie Leckies, right? And a lot of those Kyogre teams had either a Zapdos or a Grimmsnarl. And this is this is one example, right? Um, all right, let's look at this one for example. This was this was top sixteen, right? So let's look at this. Why was the Zapdos useful? So and not only that, it was a Life Orb Zapdos. And also, this Kyogre had Assault Vest. Assault Vest Kyogre was actually very uh, common in of the Tonogre teams. Like, it wasn't just one team that had AB. A lot of them had the Assault Vest because a lot of them really wanted the, the Ice move and the Electric move. So that was also interesting to see. And then, again, you're hiding behind the Grim Snarl with screens. But again, Zapdos Grim has always been a very good. And if you, if you remember back in Series 9, there was always a team with like P2, Grimmsnarl, and Zapdos, and then there was something like a Heatran there. Um, but you know, the, why is why is Zapdos so good? Because you know, if you think about it, um, Zacian can't really touch it that well. You know, because it, the Behemoth Blade and the Fighting Move doesn't really do too much. The Zapdos has Airstream, so that just tears apart the Grass types. Uh, and then if you go for something like Heatwave, like what this person has here, which is what a lot of them had. 
then now you're just wrecking sun teams and you're also wrecking kyogre teams because not only can you change uh the weather against kyogre but you also have your stab lightning move for kyogre okay and then the roost set is actually really really nice over protect because now you're getting recovery after all your life orb chip or even after your dynamax is done you can always click roost uh, and then just get that constant recovery going and yeah, this is a really good this is a really good uh, Zacian Kyogre team um, I don't know about the focus sash and Cinderor, but I understand it. That's probably for Kyogre <laughs> That's that was like more of a Japanese tech, but yeah um, Zapdos was the preferred mon over something like Regilecki because you know when you run Regilecki in Ensign and then Zacian you're you're triple you're tripling your ground weakness and I, I never liked that I, I always thought if I'm gonna have a weakness I, I would always want at at most two right if i'm gonna be ground weak only two pokemon have to be ground weak in terms of like team building but if you're gonna run zation red you like any and incineroar now you have three ground weaknesses and that's that's kind of bad <laughs> all right so the the swap for the zapdos or even the thunderous for that matter was um you know something to consider and i thought could happen um, and if you remember when I made a series 11 squad with a uh, torn ogre, I also went with uh, a Zapdos and a Metagross uh, on that kind of team. But yeah, it's cool to see Zapdos rise again and Regilecki. Perhaps this is a uh, this is about that time where maybe it's run its course. Uh, I don't. I think it's still a great mon, but in a format like this where there's so much you know Groudon and you know Landorus. All right, and because you can add that second restricted right which is uh, you know and then there's stuff like gastrodon and seismitoad showing up the use for regilecki has declined quite a bit so i could totally understand why um, the zapdos has taken over and i would expect it to see even more usage uh when the format officially starts especially on these zation kyogre teams all right so let's just keep on going on to the next uh topic okay this one this one holds personal to me right because you know this is this is about the secondary mascot on the clover bells channel uh and this is the argument of grim snarl or whimsicott right which one is the better fairy if you know me and if you've been following the channel for a while i basically stick a grim snarl on a lot of my teams right because i think it's so good and i get so much value out of it especially when it's a screens grim snarl set and then you know some people they always tell me oh you know clover i i, I like that team you made i used the same five mons but i took out the grim snarl and i went with tailwind whimsicott and then i'm just like why <laughs> you know the, the thing is you know you when you play ladder you run into whimsicott a lot right you, the, the the tailwind plebs always come out to play on the ladder uh, but when it comes to a tournament look how well grimmsnarl can do versus whimsicott and this is always my argument look at that how many grimmsnarls top cut 16 grimmsnarls how many of you tailwind fans uh, with your Whimsicots, how many did they, how many did you guys top cut? Only two. There's only two Whimsicott in the top cut. Meanwhile, you have 16 Grimmsnarl. Look at this. Look at all these teams with Grimmsnarl. How many of these teams had Whimsicott? All right. Tone Ogre. All right. A, a Kyogre team had one. Where's the other two? Where's the other one? All right. We're, there's, I think, oh, it was Paul, right? Okay. So you had two Whimsicott and then every other team had pretty much a grim snarl there's no there's no debate about it like what does grim snarl do all right here we go let's take a look i mean again you have so many things and so many tools with this pokemon uh and in the best of three in, in the tournament with dynamax you know light screen and reflect um controls the game and it slows it down right because we can't be having these dynamax moves with base 140 130 attack going left and right and then ending the match in three turns we need we need some kind of damage mitigation all right because if, if we just have dynamax running around going like that with all those broken moves games will be over in two turns and then pokemon is just not that fun all right and this is the problem with dynamax but if you add something like grim snarl you know with the screen support where you can mitigate that damage all right and force to drag the game out a little bit more where you know you have to think more you have to make more plays you have to make more reads um then this is where the better player shines in the end instead of just clicking the tailwind button and go Burr! okay <laughs> all right and then you you just round it out with something like uh, an attacking move like spirit break you can pin caloric shadows with sucker punch you know you always see stuff like grim snarl and oh i almost put it again grim snarl and incineroar on a lot of teams you know because these two they do really well against 
um, you know, well, what's your call? They do really well uh, against Calyrex Shadow, right? And then you could even run something like Thunder Wave, you know, for speed control, or if you're not Team Thunder Wave, if you're Team Scary Face, that, that's fine too, right? Because you could run all these moves. Whimsicott can't do that. Whimsicott doesn't get Thunder Wave. Does Whimsicott catch Scary Face? Let me see. You know, I know it gets Tailwind, but does this, I don't think it gets Tailwind. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it doesn't, right? So once it's dead, it's dead. But the Grim Snarl, the screens, when you run Light Clay, okay, that is literally eight turns of screens, okay? And in a Dynamax format where you, if you can get eight turns of slowing the game down like that, that's very, very useful, okay? And that's what's going to make you win a tournament. That's what makes all the damage calcs work and that's where your pokemon are gonna live with like a few hp right and then you can just ko mons right back whimsicott doesn't do that for you okay whimsicott gets this it gets this thing switcheroo you know which works on ladder a lot you know you get to give them the eject button and then you know just hit them with like fake out or sucker punch and then their max is gone okay haha that works for one game all right but then that's not how's that gonna do in a, in a, in a best of three tournament i don't know well Clearly not so well because there's only two Whimsicott in the top eight. Meanwhile, you have 20 Grim Snarls <laughs> in the top cut. So yeah, that's always my argument. So it's actually interesting to again note and once again prove what is the berry, what is the better fairy? Is it Grim Snarl or is it Whimsicott? To me, once again, it is Grim Snarl, just based on the tournament results. Let's keep on going. Okay, the next thing I do want to look at is the lack of Calyrex Shadow Rider in the top cut. You would imagine as, you know, with something that's so oppressive as Calyrex Shadow, uh, that fact that you can couple it with uh, another restricted would make it even more strong. Uh, but the fact of the matter is there was only three Calyrex Shadows in the top cut. Only three. And then speaking of Calyrex, what about the other Calyrex? Calyrex Ice Rider. There was actually no calyrex ice rider in the top cut which is also very very surprising uh to say the least well why is that well you know uh well based on what it can do uh let's take a look at the ones that did top cut so calyrex shadow th this was north right this is kyle's team i thought this was a good team and i i always like um calyrex with groudon right now i i, I just recently had to make a video with Calyrex and Zacian. I didn't really like it that much because it was very hyper offensive and then not really leaving a lot of room for defensive positioning and pivoting. Uh, I mean, you can, but it's just not as great as one would think. It's just click Tailwind, click Airstream, go Burr, click Astro Barrage. Uh, but this, this I like. If you can put Calyrex with a Groudon team, I think that's really, really good. Um, so North did a good job here, and he actually has a cool tech with Will-O-Wisp, and then he has the Focus Sash just for like the mirror matchup. You know, if he clicks Astro Barrage and I click Astro Barrage, if he has Life Orb and I have Focus Sash, I'm gonna win the game because I'll live with one HP. He'll just die to my Astro Barrage. So that's uh, that's actually a, a cool idea, and I think Jones did this too, right? Um, I think they both had the same team because I think they were working on it together or something like that. Where are you, Jones? Yeah, see, like, yeah, same idea. So the, these were the two. Um, that that top cut. The, the, these are the homies, right? Uh, same thing, right? Exactly. Uh, oh, actually, he had the oh he had the he had the pink gastrodon, and this one had the blue one. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, what was the other one that that top cut? Uh, is it here? Oh, it's oh this was a cool one. Um, I was surprised to see this one. This was a a Xerneas Calyrex team. I want to know who this person is. I want to bring him onto my channel. Um, but yeah, this was this was another one. So this one wasn't really meant to Dynamax. It's just it has choice specs, and um, it has a, a bunch of standard moves with Helping Hand. Holy cow! Helping Hand choice specs. That's something. Um, and then this one has ter this Xerneas has Terrain Pulse. Whoa, that's that's a cool thing. Um, I wonder if there's some kind of combination with the Rillaboom that's both. Oh, and the Reggie. Oh, so the Reggie like is both. Okay, I I see where things are going here. All right, this is your max option here, right? And then there's your terrain pulse. I think this is cool. Um, but yeah, what happened? Why is why was there no Calyrex Shadow uh, or not as much Calyrex Shadow in the top cut? And same thing with the Calyrex Ice Rider. I mean, the the I mean there was one. Right, the, 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 this one looks like a standard six, where you had like instant Mimikyu, uh, Calyrex Ice with Kyogre, and then an Electric type like either Eleki or Zapdos. So you know this is pretty standard, uh, except some of these sets. Holy cow, Hex Amoongus, 
and then Overheat and Cinnabar. Oh my goodness, this is definitely a Japanese team. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, but uh, again, the, I, I beg the question, why was there no Calyrex Shadow and why was there no Calyrex Ice Rider? So now that transitions us into our next topic, uh, which is the rise and prominence of Eveltal. Okay, so now if we take a look at the usage stats yet again, um, we'll get our answer to our previous question. What, what happened? I mean, well, first of all, how many Eveltals are there? Uh, there was seven in the top cut. Uh, and not only that, there's 16 Grim Snarls and 35 Incineroars. When you have 16 Grim Snarls and 35 Incineroars and seven Eveltals, <laughs> okay, I, I don't, I don't think you're gonna get uh, that much Calyrex Shadow Rider. Um, and it makes sense, right? Uh, because you know, again, Incineroar has that dark move. It has, it, it resists Calyrex very, very well. Same thing with Grim Snarl. Um, you you pin it if you have Sucker Punch, um, and the screens just you know make it do not so great damage. And then you have Spirit Break to make it even more sad. Okay, uh, but of course you're restricted of Eveltal just absolutely hard counters it, and it forces you to maybe not even bring it in a matchup. So let's quickly look at um, Eveltal here. I mean, and what does it do? So Eveltal again, Dark Aura really really good, and then it, some teams have Grim Snarl and or Incineroar, Incineroar on the team so uh yeah and then again before I even do this let's look at the top eight look at this how many teams had Eveltal in the top eight there's two of them right there was Atia and then there was Jorge right these two and specifically Zacian Eveltal were in in the top eight right so and it makes sense uh because you know what does uh Eveltal do well because Zacian you, you already have Zacian on the team, and the only thing that can really outspeed Zacian is Calyrex Shadow Rider. Well, let's just slap on a Restricted that can take out Calyrex Shadow Rider, and then Zacian can just run ran, run mad, and then that's where Eveltal comes in. So, Eveltal, right? And then, of course, how many of these did they have Incineroar? Yeah, see, look, they also had Incineroar, and this one had the Grimmsnarl on it. So, Eveltal, Incineroar, and Grimmsnarl for Jorge, and then Matea had um Eveltal and Incineroar. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing names, all right, my apologies. Uh my apologies, I should say. So, um you know, if you have something like an assault vest uh and then you have something like a standard move set of foul play, sucker punch, oblivion ring, your stab move and um what was it? Snarl? Yeah, what what is what is all these moves besides oblivion wing just absolutely annihilate uh Calyrex Shadow. Right? There's nothing you can really do here. Um you know, and then you add Grim Snarl and Incineroar to the mix, where you're you're throwing something like Throat Chop, or you're throwing something like Sucker Punch as well, um, and which are boosted uh, with Dark Aura. So now Calyrex just doesn't really do well, and you know there, there's another there's other reasons why uh, it also didn't do so well, um, because and and this is also with uh, Zacian uh, Zacian Eveltal teams, right? Because with Eveltal you can Dynamax and go for Max Airstream, and then make your Zacian faster. And then Max Darkness is good, you know, because on the team you have special attackers like this one had Aleki, uh, and even the Lapras could come in the back in this case after you max the the Aveltal. And then Jorge, same idea. You have the Aleki, you have the Venusaur, so something to take advantage of those, um, you know, special defense drops. Even though the Venusaur uh, would likely would also likely max. Uh, same with the Aleki, but again, you could do that option if you wanted to max uh, the Aveltal here. But yeah, I mean, it's just such a hard counter to Calyrex. And then you, you add these two with it, um, which were on pretty much every team. And Calyrex just doesn't have a good time. So yeah, and then not only that, but then we had some other Mons uh, that also ran Dark Moves. And that'll transition us to our next topic. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take a look at certain niche Pokemon that did really, really well, especially in the top cut. Um, and I want to take a look at three three of them specifically. Uh, the first one is Ferrothorn, then Seismitoad, and then of course Gastrodon. I feel like these three stole the show in terms of niche Pokemon. Zapdos a little bit to a degree, but Zapdos has always been like usable in, in, in pretty much any kind of format we've had, Dynamax or no Dynamax. But those three really, really stole the show. And let's take a look at why. So if we look here, um, top 16, right? What's his name? Tarao? Taro Okada, right? He also had on a typical Zacian Kyogre team a Ferrothorn there. And the Ferrothorn is AV and it had 
um, knockoff. And this is also one reason why Calyrex also had a very, very hard time because now you have certain things running dark moves and um, it just gave it so much problems. And I really, really like AV Ferrothorn. I think there was quite a bit of AV Ferrothorn in this tournament. Of the seven, I think half of them were AV, right? Because if I, if, I think I saw another one uh, just within the top 32 here. Um, what's his name? Was it Anders that had it? Or was it, no, it was Kenneth, right? Yeah, Kenneth, um, if you look at Kenneth's team, I think I also opened, yeah, see, Kenneth also had um, knockoff on his on his uh, AV Thor Ferrothorn, and again, it's another Kyogreization team. So, and and he also had the Urshifu uh, to top it all off. But yeah, uh, I really really like AV Ferrothorn here, and I think it could do really really well, um, just because of the utility it has, and it becomes a pretty good Dynamax option. Um, you know, Max Steel Spike is is really really good, so you can pump up your Zacian, your Kyogre, uh, a little bit. You can go for Max Knuckles, same thing, pop up. Pop, you know, pump up your Zacian, you know, even your Urshifu to a degree if you brought it as well. And then you have the Power Whip for the Kyogre matchup. And then, you know, Body Press, you know, can just remove Incineroars uh, completely. And of course, the Max Darkness is really good uh, for Kyogre and for Kingdra on this kind of team. Yeah, so they can capitalize off of those special defense drops. And then same thing over here. Uh, yeah, so like if you Dynamax this, so now the Zapdos does really good damage. The Kyogre does really, really good damage. Uh, so, you know, very, very useful uh, is the AV Ferrothorn right now. Um, and if you're a Calyrex player and you see a Ferrothorn on the other team, all right, you got to scout and see, does it have knockoff? Because if it does, all right, then you're going to want to play around that, so to speak. Okay. And then the other two, um, if I recall, it was, oh yeah, it was the, oh, it was Gat, it was Gastrodon and Seismitoad. Oh my goodness. Those two are, are really good. And we're going to make another video where we talk about the five uh you know niche or underrated pokemon uh but yeah let's talk about gastronon for a second so gastronon always seems to find its way uh in the meta in some shape or form and it's really really good because if you have a set like this where you have scald um earth power okay and then something like yawn and or recover you know something like this if you had a set like this or if you had another gastronon set you know still scald um earth power ice beam and then uh either protect or recover you know you but whatever yeah i think yawn is really good i think you got to have yawn on gashed on in this kind of format um but you know something like this maybe maybe not this set but you know something like this where not only can you punish a dynamax with yawn uh but then you you can remove incineroars you can remove opposing landerses uh, Kyogre can't really do anything to you, uh, and yeah, you're pretty good in Tization as well, especially if you Dynamax the Gastrodon, you know, you can just sit there and then just go for Max Quakes on the Zacian, and the Zacian can't really touch you that well, so a lot of use for Gastrodon in this kind of format, um, you know, and what else? Uh, I guess the only thing you have to be aware of is Venusaur and Grass types like Rillaboom, um, but... Uh, hey, uh, that's why you have five other mons on the team, <laughs> okay? But yeah, leading Gashadon is always interesting, right? You have to scout for that yawn, and just having that recover as a late game option is also really, really nice, okay? And again, if you have that ice move on it, like this set, uh, then you know now you're threatening Landris's, and you're you're also able to change the weather a little bit. But you can also do that with Max Geyser. But yeah, the Gashadon has its use, uh, and then something like this where, with Seismitoad. So. Depending on how the player wants to play Seismitoad, of course, um, I do like the Life Orb set, and then they run something like this with Liquidation, um, what is it, Stomping Tantrum, and then a Grass move. What was their physical Grass move? I think it was Power Whip or Grass Knot. Yeah, it was Power Whip, and then finally Airstream, right? Th this, is, this is so good. This is also one reason. These two are the two reasons why Regilecki has also declined, because, you know, Seismitoad, okay, Max Geyser, right? And then you're in the rain. You know, what's your speed in the rain if you're Jolly? Okay, so one third. Oh, that's actually really, really good. Um, and if if it was, I think you speed tie. Yeah, you speed tie Regilecki after one airstream. I'm sorry, after a um, swift swim, which is actually kind of cool. So if you could find a way to click two airstreams uh, or even three, then you outspeed Regilecki. But uh, Regilecki can't even touch you, so that doesn't even matter. Uh, but yeah, airstream is really good, so that can also be 
good against uh, potential grass types. And if you have something like a Grimmsnarl on the team, um, then you can take those grass hits a little bit. Um, and then Power Whip, this is for Kyogre just to knock it out. This is also good against Blastoise, which is still pretty good in the meta right now. Stomping Tantrum, so now Zacian's gonna have a problem uh, against you, and Ensign can't really do too much to you. I mean, yes, it can intimidate you, but you know, still. And then Liquidation, again, um, very good against Ensign and Landorus. Uh, if you can get in the right position But yeah, uh, Seismito really 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 nice and again just having that swift swim ability um, Where you you partner this with the the Kyogre uh, Is quite strong and then you throw in a Zacian on here and now you got a solid core <laughs> um, But yeah, I, I really really like it and th there's so much room for this Pokemon to be on a lot of good competitive teams I expect this usage for Gastrodon and Seismitoad to uh, Even increase um, when the format starts so be aware for that, but this is a cool set um, This is a very common set that a lot of players are gonna use so be aware for that All right, and then the last one what was it? Uh, I believe it was... No, wait, no, I think... Gashanon, Ferrothorn, and Seismito. No, that was it. That, those were our three. <laughs> All right, so then checking that off the list. So now let's talk about what is, you know, the more... What is the dominant archetype uh, to be afraid of? And one last uh, note in, after that one. All right, so what was the most dominant duo? So we know, so Zacian and Ibelto was really, really good. Um, we saw that a lot, but ultimately it came down to Zacian and Kyogre. I mean, look at this. Th Zacian, 32, 32 on, on the team, 78% uses. Kyogre, 20, 48% uses. I mean, how many of them were as a, as a duo? Uh, let's take a look here. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen. So, wait, I'm not done yet. Thirteen, uh, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen Zacian Kyogre teams and the top cut. Holy cow, that's a third. Uh, that's a third of Victory Road, right? Because what was it, 44? Yeah, so that's huge. So, it Zacian Kyogre, that's the one you're trying to look at. Um, Zacian Groudon, Zacian Veltal, those are also really, really good. But, you know, why are, why is Zacian Kyogre so good? So, I mean, typically, you know, now you're just adding something like this, where you have Incineroar, Grimmsnarl, okay, and now instead of Zapdos, I'm sorry, instead of Regilecki, you're opting for the Zapdos, uh, and instead of the Tornadus, you're opting for either, like, you know, uh, a Prankster Thunderous or, you know, uh, the Grimmsnarl in this case. So you have Instant Zapdos, Grimmsnarl, and then some Grass type, right? And this is pretty much every every team that was running Zacian Kyogre. So you either saw the Ferrothorn where you had the Grass type and then you doubled in on the Steel type, or you did something like Amoongus, you know, just to also give you, you know, a little bit of a Trick Room matchup. And then maybe this was like a Calm Mind Kyogre. You could lead Kyogre Amoongus, you know, click Rage Powder, click Calm Minds, or you know, click your screens uh, and whatnot, but or redirect and start going for a Swords Dance Zacian. Uh, that was also interesting. Or then you could also do, you know, straight up Rillaboom, you know, G Max option. Rillaboom is always good. So now you have another fake out user on the team and, you know, something else to pressure the, the other water types. But yeah, some grass type uh, with Instant, Grimmsnarl, and Zapdos. This is, this is like the, the premier Zacian Kyogre squad at the moment, right? So. Uh, Ensign, Zapdos, Grimmsnarl, and then uh, that, that grass type option. So uh, that is the premier squad. And I think when the format starts, you'll see a lot of Zacian Kyogre, probably even more than like Groudon teams. But I do expect um, the, the Groudon teams to have a little bit more of an answer. Um, and again, don't sleep on the Palky and the Sogaleo squads. All right. I, I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two were to win uh, the next big tournament. So be on the lookout uh, for those kinds of teams. All right, and maybe even Calyrex Ice can have a showcase uh, because we didn't see any in the top cut, but we'll see what happens um, within the next format or the next tournament. I, I said format, no. Um, but one thing I do want to leave uh, uh, and make you guys aware of is the, the steel types, okay? So let's look at that. 
Okay, so for the steel types, how many how many of these teams had steels? Actually, let me that that's too much. Let let's see how many didn't have a steel type, right? So let's see one. Okay, uh, basically they are non-Zation teams, right? So two, no steel there. Uh, so nope, that had a Ferrothorn. Three, okay. Uh, four. Nope, nope. Five. Nope, that's a Ferrothorn. That's a Togunamaru. Six. Six. So of the 44 top cut, only six do not have a steel type. So steel, more more specifically, Zacian, very, very important. Um, and it's useful to have, right? Because, you know, it resists a lot of moves. Um, and, you know, Max Quake is a thing, even though Zacian can't really go for Max Quake. <laughs> but other steel mons have. And there's just not really that many good steels outside of the, the restricteds, right? So um, we'll see if any more of the steel types can rise in the next format. But again, I keep saying format in the next kind of big tournament. But I do expect Sogaleo to, again, also rise and rise and quickly um, take the meta by storm, especially when coupled with Palkia. I think, I think I've got a squad for it, all right? And... Uh, Let's see if someone can really make Palkia Sogaleo work, all right? But um, that's about it for our Victory Road recap. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I miss something um, within our analysis, all right? And hopefully I was able to open your eyes or open your mind a little bit or make you think about something uh, when you're trying to build your squads as we get closer and closer to day one of the official format. So once again, Thanks to Evan for the spreadsheet. Thanks to Victory Road for holding that 500 plus tournament. Um, it gave us a lot of useful information. It gave people a lot of good ideas and things to watch out for, especially when they're building their teams and playing on ladder and testing their squad. So until then, have a good one.